applause going as we welcome to the stage the CEO of Body and Mind. Let's hear it from Michael Mills. Thanks very much, Kevin. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for taking some time to learn a little bit about Body and Mind. We're a multi-state operator, and uh, I'll go through uh, I'll go through all our growth over the last probably six odd years. Obviously, we'll be talking about forward-looking statements. If you'd like to take a look at this in detail, please visit us at Body and Mind. So, just a quick overview of the states that we operate in right now. Um, we're in Nevada, California, Michigan, Ohio, Arkansas. We have retail, distribution, cultivation, and processing, and or processing in each of those states. Our strategy at Body and Mind is very simple. We identify low-cost ways to get into new markets. We typically look at new markets as they're opening, so markets that currently have no legal cannabis program, that are looking to bring in either a medical or an adult use program, or jurisdictions within a legal state where we can apply for licenses and win those licenses. We've also made accretive acquisitions to the company. When we come in and we, and we buy another operation, we optimize them, we bring our SOPs. We've been in this business for roughly six years, so we have a very good understanding of all aspects of the business. We have a great set of SOPs and best management practices to optimize new acquisitions. One of the, I think one of the things that we bring to the table with our experience is we can go in and we can assess uh, whether a deal's worth moving from interest to next level very, very quickly. We have a really ski skilled team of acquisition uh, analysts who are going into a whole bunch of different markets and looking at opportunities, typically distressed or, or value opportunities that we can take advantage of. And, you know, we've done a great job executing. And I'll, as we go through the states, I think you'll get an impression of, of how we've grown the company here. So we strove from the very beginning, and the very beginning for us was winning a cultivation production license in Nevada. When Nevada went from being an illegal state to a medical state, very small market in that state, and we strove from the very beginning to start a, a real quality lifestyle brand. And, and, and we, you know, body and mind resonates with a lot of people. And I think one of the most important things about a brand is being authentic and also having extremely high quality. And we've always worked on high quality cultivation. We've won numerous awards for both our flower and our extracted products. We've got some great edibles as well. So I'm going to go through each of the states that we operate in and give you sort of a bit of an overview of, of, of where we are, where we started, and, and where we're going. Um, in Nevada, again, we started roughly six years ago. We won one of the first cultivation and production licenses as that state was moving from, from an, into a medical um, uh, uh, legal operation. And Nevada was actually one of the fastest states to flip from medical to adult use. And anybody who goes to Vegas, you know, on a consistent basis has really probably seen, it's a bit of a microcosm for the United, entire United States. It's become very, very sort of part of the nature of Vegas. And, and, you know, if you went there 10 years ago and you got caught smoking a joint, you'd probably go to jail. If you go there right now, you're going to see all kinds of cannabis-friendly um, businesses, advertising, and, and it's really become part of the Vegas culture. So in Vegas, we have about a 20,000, 18,000 square foot um, grow facility. Uh, we've been operating that for six plus years. Uh, and we also have roughly an 8,000 square foot processing facility. That's where we make our oils, extracts, edibles, shatter, batter, butter. Uh, we've got about 70 SKUs in that market. I think that because we came into the market at the very beginning with great product, great branding, um, and it was a very small medical market. We got to know everyone in the state, and we developed a really strong following for, for uh, the flower we create and, and the products that we make. So we were in a great position as that state moved from medical to adult use. So with some license success in Nevada, we started looking at other states that were opening up. And this was, this was quite some time ago, wrote applications in Ohio when the Ohio state of Ohio was looking for, to move from, from no program to a medical program. And uh, we really like the Ohio market. We won a dispensary license. Uh, when that stayed open, we also won a production license. And uh, we opened the dispensary. We were probably one of the first dozen dispensaries to open in that state. Really, really like the state. We're just about 30 minutes west of Cleveland uh, in a town called Elyria. And uh, we, we just love the Ohio market. We opened our production facility in Ohio just at the end of last year. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to bring our, our brand portfolio and our product portfolio from Nevada where we, you know, we have great data on how that does in the state and move it into Ohio. 
One of the nice things about that is we've got a dispensary that's going to be the initial lead order out of that production facility. Um, and then as we grow, we'll be able to expand into a wholesale uh, across the state. Next state I'll talk about is California. We came into California with acquisitions. Uh, there was a group called the Show Grow Group that had multiple dispensaries. We bought uh, the Long Beach dispensary off of them. That was operating. Um, it was voted best dispensary in Long Beach in 2018, 2019. Uh, we've recently rebranded that from Shrogo to Body and Mind, so it's a Body and Mind branded dispensary. We also bought a, a paper license or an undeveloped license in San Diego. Now, San Diego is a great uh, example of a great jurisdiction in a, in a, a, a large state that's fully legal. Uh, in San Diego, they really limited the number of licenses, so it's, it's very beneficial when you're, when you're a company operating in a limited license environment. It's where we typically target our, our growth strategy. Uh, we bought that paper license, we developed that, we got it open just in time for COVID to hit, and um, it's been fantastic. It's been a great dispensary for us. Uh, we recently rebranded that from the Showgrow name to the Body and Mind brand, uh, probably finished that roughly a month ago. Um, our most recent acquisition in California is in a town called Seaside. Uh, we bought a dispensary called The Reef. We really like the Seaside market. It's close to Monterey Bay, just south of Santa Cruz. Again, limited license environment. I uh, really like the team there, and I think it's going to be an excellent addition uh, to our California strategy. Um, and in the, in, in the early days of COVID, we went and into a, a very good tax uh, efficient jurisdiction and wrote a fantastic lease for the opportunity to develop a, a cultivation and a manufacturing facility. And we've been moving that process along. It's not a fast process, but this is what we do. We, we take a very low cost way. It might take a little bit longer to develop a full vertical. And the benefit of doing this in a place like California is we can supply three dispensaries with uh, any manufacturer or cultivation that we bring forward. The next state we're in is Arkansas. So again, a limited license state, a medical state, uh, roughly 3 million people, uh, four, roughly 40 dispensaries are open in that state. We're in a town called West Memphis, which is right across the bridge from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and we also have cultivation there. So we opened the dispensary again, just in time for COVID and uh, got the cultivation started. And we really got to steady state or a perpetual harvest just in the last month or, month or so. Uh, we're turning out some incredible product in that market uh, that we will sell through our own dispensary and also wholesale to other dispensaries there. We're also, we've also done a deal with a manufacturer there, so we'll start bringing body and mind branded extracted products, shatter, batter, butter, and, and, um, and some innovative products into that Arkansas market. We were also voted best dispensary of the year, um, the year after we opened. So uh, it says a lot about our team. I, I think anybody who's in this industry understands that bud tenders are such a key component to being successful in this business. And we have a fantastic team across all our operations. The next state that we're in is Michigan. We just opened a dispensary there in February. Um, and we also have local and state approval for a cultivation and production facility. We actually put that on pause based on, on uh, inflation and supply constraints. That's something that we can get started up again fairly quickly here. And the idea there, again, is to supply our dispensary and also bring our body and mind proven products into that state. So just talk a little bit about financials. Um, our fiscal year is a, 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 an offset fiscal year. So our fiscal year end is actually July 31st. So something to keep in mind when you're taking a look at this. Um, from 2020 to 2021, we had a 330% a uh, increase in revenue. We had close to a 700% increase in gross profit. And we roughly 3.7 million in EBITDA or positive adjusted EBITDA. So we were cash flow positive for Q3, Q4. We were profitable in Q4. And that was really a function of doing a lot of building uh, two and a half years ago. So as we opened the San Diego dispensary, as we opened the Arkansas cultivation, as, we, as, as some of these projects start cash flowing, then all of a sudden your earnings start coming up and, and you're, in, you're in this great phase. You can see the revenue ramp there. And we're, we're in another expansion phase right now. And obviously when you're expanding, it's a bit of a hit to the earnings for the benefit of future revenue. Just uh, some metrics on our, uh, on our financials. Uh, we've worked really hard to keep dilution to a minimum. We have roughly 113 million shares outstanding, uh, roughly 140 million fully diluted. Uh, we've got about $54 million in assets. Uh, our last quarter was $8 million, so that puts us at a run rate of, of $32 million. Uh, I think our market cap was uh, in the $24 million range. So, so we're trading at uh, a fairly significant discount to uh, last year's revenue. 
Just talk about our leadership team. Um, I've been in business for 25 years. I've worked in everything from tech, manufacturing. Uh, I worked for the Financial Post newspaper, which is sort of the, the Canadian equivalent of the, uh, the Wall Street Journal for roughly 10 years. Um, and I've been with the company for roughly five years now. Trip Hoffman, who's here, uh, is, has a fantastic history, both on the capital market side, but also um, in, as an early adopter in, or an early pioneer in Colorado. Um, Trip to, came to us after running a couple grows in Colorado, running, running dispensaries, and then going out and helping other companies optimize their facilities. Um, he's been a fantastic addition to the team as we continue to expand. Uh, Trip's got a PhD in physics from Purdue, and he brings, he brings so much skill on the analytical side and also on the people side um, as we continue to evaluate opportunities and grow the company. Dong Shim's our CFO. He's been CFO for a number of publicly traded companies. He understands the business incredibly well. Um, Alexis Podesta is the past Secretary of State for California for uh, business, consumer services, and housing. Uh, she was instrumental as California went through uh, the difficult exercise of moving from medical, where they'd been medical for years and years and years, to adult use. And Brent Reuters here in, uh, at the conference, he's uh, got a ton of capital markets experience. He's worked on the credit side. He's worked for Onyx, CIBC, Royal Bank, uh, and has been a fantastic addition to our team. So execution, you know, one of the things that we've been successful with, and we're not successful all the time, but we've had some great success, is, is writing licenses and winning licenses. And it's probably the most accretive way to build your company in this business. Um, it, we look, again, we look primarily at only limited license states and limited license jurisdictions. Uh, we see new states that are opening up. I think that's one of the greatest catalysts for, this, for the overall cannabis I industry in the U.S. is there's new states opening up on a consistent basis. And, and we keep a very close eye on the states that we want to get into and apply for licenses there. Um, I mentioned acquisitions. We really only look at value acquisitions, acquisitions that are going to make a sense uh, to fit into our team and to fit into our profile. We have a development team, and I think I talked about a couple of dispensaries that we opened right in the middle of COVID. Building anything during the middle of COVID was extremely challenging, and our team's got a bunch of experience building out dispensaries, building out grows, and they were able to deliver at a, in a really, really difficult environment. And efficiency, I think that you know our six years of operation, uh, you learn a lot, and, and everyone makes mistakes in this business. We made a lot of those mistakes a long time ago, and we've learned from them, and we can take all that knowledge and that knowledge base and the people who've helped build the company and move them into our new operations. So some milestones coming up. You know, everyone wants to understand what growth looks like. We have a bunch of milestones coming up here. Um, we did our acquisition for the Seaside Dispensary. That was definitive on December 1st. Uh, we started managing that dispensary on, on December 1st. We expect that transaction to close probably in the next 60 days or so. Um, and then and that, will be, uh, it's, that will be fully consolidated in the next quarter. We also took out, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a license and a fantastic lease for a potential uh, cultivation and manufacturing facility. And we'll continue to move that forward. Um, in Ohio, we started a new production facility. That really came online and got going at the end of the year last year. Anytime you stand up a new operation, there's typically some lag before it starts contributing the revenue and, and getting to cash flow positives. So we expect to see that really starting to, to play a part and, and certainly expand, expand our brand into the Ohio market. Um, one of the other things in Ohio is that there's a very good potential that they'll, there will be a ballot initiative to move Ohio from medical to adult use as part of the 2022 election. It's 50-50 it's, it's right now. It does look like they're gonna get the signatures for it. We saw this happen in, in, uh, in Las Vegas and in Nevada when it went from medical to adult use, and it's a rocket ship. It's, it, it really is a game changer in those states, especially if you're in early. Um, in Michigan, we opened our new dispensary. Obviously, that's a drag on earnings for the, for the two or three months before you open it, and a couple months afterwards as, as it starts to ramp, so we should see some ramp there. Um, and again, we've had that cultivation and processing facility that we're moving forward um, paused right now. In Arkansas, we, we really just got to steady state with our cultivation um, at the end of the year last year, actually really kind of Q1 this year. And uh, we start to, we'll start to see those revenues ramp out of the cultivation. Um, and again, you know, it's similar to Ohio, Arkansas looks like it's going to have a ballot initiative to go adult use. Um, and that could be a real benefit uh, for the company. In Illinois, uh, we have management agreements and, and um, an option to acquire two licenses uh, uh, that were given conditional, uh, a 
uh, winning by the uh, Illinois State Lottery. Uh, in typical fashion, uh, those are all held up in litigation, so they haven't given the licenses out. We're hoping to see some results from that by, I'm guessing, sort of mid-summer, but that's a bit of a guess on anyone's part uh, when it comes to litigation. So just in summary, uh, why BAM? We've got near-term revenue growth. Uh, we've worked really hard over the years to keep a tight capital structure. Uh, I think we've proven to the market that we're excellent stewards of capital. We run a very lean, thin team. Uh, exceptional product quality. Uh, we're seeing, you know, it's really funny that the product that we're, we're putting out in Arkansas, we're seeing people driving for a couple hours to come to our dispensary to buy our flour because it's great. Um, and and that, yeah, that's, that's really uh, such a testament to, to our team and our ability to grow uh, excellent flour. Um, we have license applications in process. We're always applying for licenses. Uh, we focus on limited license jurisdictions. These are really the places you want to be doing business. Uh, upside, if Ohio or Arkansas or both move from medical to adult use. And, uh, you know, we've, we came up with a strategy of, of measured growth uh, several years ago. And I think if you go back through our presentations, we've delivered on everything that we said that we would do. Uh, we've got a proven track record and a strong management team. And that's, uh, that's the end there, folks. I don't know if there's any questions, or I, I see I'm out of time here. I don't know if Kevin's going to pull me off the stage. Uh, I wouldn't dream. Michael Mills, CEO, body and mind. <laughs> Speaking of questions, we had uh, two questions that were sent in. And feel free to raise your hand. I'll bring a mic over if you have a question yourself. Um, I'll get you. Uh, but the first question, uh, sitting in the back, I, I couldn't hear a lot. But I heard you mention, uh, I believe, Arkansas. I guess one of the questions that we had was asking you to tell us a little bit more about your recent expansion into Michigan. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when we, when we uh, looked at getting into Michigan, we looked at a number of jurisdictions that we wanted to get into, and uh, we found an opportunity to do a, a social license uh, participation in the Muskegon area. We felt this was just a really great way for us to move into Michigan in a relatively slow way. As I mentioned, we've got a cultivation and... Uh, and processing plan. We have put that on pause right now, but um, we do like aspects of that market. Awesome. So, question from the audience. Just let us know your name and what company you're representing. Yeah. Ma Michael, thanks for the presentation. Really interesting Thank to learn you. more about the company. Maxwell from Across International. We do like material processing equipment for extraction. So that was why I was going to ask, like, with the great flour you guys are putting out in Arkansas and kind of building that brand in a relatively new market, are there plans to get into extraction, post-processing, and manufacturing there? That's a kind of question number one. And then question number two is, again, you've got really successful extraction products and edible products in all these other markets. Like, what are kind of some of the fav or client favorites from the data that you guys have aggregated on, like, what products people seem to like most? Yeah, so I guess the first question, if, just in case you guys didn't hear, the first question was, um, are we planning on extracted products in Arkansas, correct? And, and yes, actually right now what we're doing is we're working with a, another uh, manufacturing production company and we're, taking, uh, we're giving them uh, our trim uh, and they're, they're taking some of it, keeping some of it for themselves and producing products for us. So the first product, and, and this is really new, I just saw a photo of it yesterday, the first product that's coming out is Shatter, it looks amazing. Um, yeah, so, and, and you know, in some of these medical markets, um, some of the extracted products that are really the norm in a place like Nevada or other states are still relatively new. Um, in Ohio, you know, we have a BHO facility, so it gives us a, a really large breadth of product options. Um, and, you know, a lot of the other producers that we've seen are CO2, and, and they just don't necessarily have the same opportunity. Um, and the second question you had was about extracted products in other... In other um, you know, I think probably one of the most popular products that we have um, on the extracted product side and, and would be Shatter in Vegas. That, that does really well. Um, we, do a, we do a really nice live resin. We do some diamonds. Um, we have a pretzel bite edible that I don't know if anyone's tried the pretzel bite edibles. I wish I had a thousand to give out to people here. Here in hand um, claps. They're, uh, yeah, they're, they're fantastic. Um, and so if you're ever in Vegas, you can certainly try them out there. Um, and we've got a couple new uh, edible products coming out, uh, fruit belts um, and another chocolate product. Uh, I think they're probably going to be out in the next couple of weeks. All right. Final question from the audience. Hello, my name is Zozo Chaga. I'm coming from South Africa. I'm a grow other side and involved in the research and development for skincare products. I want to know, since you're spreading around uh, different states in the US, do you, by, do you perhaps have an intention of like penetrating to Africa? 
because quite a few countries are opening up. Yeah, and there's, you know, I've, I've seen a number of companies um, move into that jurisdiction, and uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. It's not something that, that is a focus for us. We, we understand the U.S. system, and, and even though it's different state to state to state, uh, because we operate in so many states, we have a really good understanding of, of all the regulations. Um, so I think that's our focus for now, but I do see some companies moving into, into Africa, and I think there's a great market there. All right, Michael Mills, body and mind.